In the beginning, God created the heavens and the underworld. And the underworld was void and waste, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Even one with the most rudimentary knowledge of the Bible knows that what has just been read is not how the opening of the book of Genesis reads. The book of Genesis, in its interpretation today, begins with the cosmological declaration that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, that it was the earth without form and void. Though the word for earth in the Hebrew language is erez, which can mean land, earth, or even to the surprise of many, Sheol. Depending on the Bible translation, there are many who will not find the word Sheol in their Bible. Sheol in the Bible refers to the grave or the conscious abode of the dead, also known as the underworld. According to the Old Testament, it was believed that all the dead went to the same place, both the righteous and the wicked. Sheol was devoid of love, hate, envy, work, thought, knowledge, and wisdom. There, there was no light, no remembrance, no praise of God, not even sound. All would die and go to the same place of gloom and shadow. King Solomon observed this in Ecclesiastes 9, 1-3. But all this I laid to heart, examining it all how the righteous and the wise and their deeds are in the hand of God. Whether it is love or hate, man does not know, both are before him. It is the same for all, since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As the good one is, so is the sinner. And he who swears is as he who shuns an oath. This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. While our translations today read earth in the Genesis creation story, there is a chance the Israelites' cosmological understanding of Genesis 1 was that it was here that God created both the heavens and the underworld. For further evidence of this way of thinking, we look to the ancient Mesopotamian and Ugaritic pagan thought processes found in the writings of Enuma Elish and the Baal myth. According to the Babylonian creation epic, where Marduk slays Tiamat, the Mesopotamian setup of the cosmos had the heavens descending to the sky with stars, to the earth then the Apsu with subterranean waters, and finally the underworld. In the Baal myth of Ugarit, Baal sends a message to the goddess Anat that offers her secret knowledge. The word of the tree and the whisper of the stone, the murmur of the heavens with the underworld of the deep to the stars. The passage reveals that the Ugaritic cosmos was like that of Mesopotamia, consisting of the heavens descending to the sky with stars, the earth, the great deep, and finally, the underworld. Observing the cosmological mindset of the ancient pagans living during the time of Genesis, we find what appears to be a five-layer setup of creation. So we must ask Genesis the same question. Was it written as a mirism? A mirism is a rhetorical device or figure of speech in which a combination of two contrasting parts of the whole refer to the whole. Should we be reading Genesis 1, 1 through 2 and understand that God created the heavens and the underworld, and in between he created the sky with stars, the earth, and the waters below? Is God the God of all creation? or was Sheol a creation of some other divine being? There is only one God capable of creation, the Lord God Almighty of the Bible. The Jews wrote of this underworld called Sheol many times in the Old Testament. From necromancy and the calling up of Samuel's spirit in 1 Samuel 28, 13, to the land of deep shadow and darkness in Job 10:21 to the necromancer's curse in Isaiah 8, 21 through 22. God being present in Sheol of Psalm 139, 8. 
to the gates of the deep in Job 38, 16. The Hebrew Bible spoke of Sheol as an inhabited place where no one wanted to go, but all were doomed to reside in. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the underworld, and the underworld was void and waste, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. If Genesis was written with a five-layer creation in mind, then we must examine what the existence of this underworld would mean for the rest of the Bible. Examining the book of Haggai, this multi-layer cosmos can be seen again, speaking of a time when God would make in the Hebrew words a new Shamaim and a new Erez. Haggai 2, 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once more, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the underworld, and the sea and the dry land. The normal translation for earth has been replaced with the underworld, as Erez again means both of these words. Quoting scholar Scott Nogle, Since heavens does not parallel sea, it is impossible to read underworld as a parallel to dry land. Consequently, underworld cannot mean earth but instead must refer to the underworld. Thus we must see the merism as enveloping both the sea and dry land, both of which therefore must exist on a plane horizontal from the observer. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and the underworld to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live. Once again, we see the merism occurring as heaven is parallel to life and the underworld is parallel to curse. Bibles today translate this as calling heaven and earth to witness against you. Though this doesn't make sense, is not parallel and has far more of a Gnostic sound to it. Isaiah 28, 16 through 18. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who is laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste, and I will make justice the line, and righteousness the plumb line. And hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with underworld will not stand. Isaiah 65, 17 through 19. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. The Jews awaited a time when the promised Messiah would bring about the resurrection of the dead. God was going to end the sting of death, promising to create a new heavens and a new earth, or underworld. Again, we cannot tell from the Hebrew word erez what is specifically being spoken of here. But a time would come when God would resurrect the dead of Sheol and separate them for judgment, some to everlasting life and some to an everlasting second death. Daniel 12, two through three. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Following the Babylonian exile and contact with both the Persian and Hellenistic cultures, the Jewish concept of the underworld, which had existed throughout all of the Old Testament, would undergo great changes as philosophy changed and with it the view of the soul. As the Messiah had entered the world, the anticipation of the reign of Messiah and resurrection was at hand. All that had lived and died had gone down to Sheol. All history and creation was awaiting a savior. Only Christ himself had ascended into heaven. John 3, 13 through 15. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the son of man. 
And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Peter records that Christ did just this, lifted up on the cross, suffered once for all, and went down to the captives of Sheol, proclaimed the good news. 1 Peter 3, 18-20 For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Paul records that Christ ascended, taking captives with him. Ephesians 4, 7-10 but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. Rising from the dead, Jesus would be the first, through the Spirit of God, to come out of the gloom and darkness of Sheol. Acts 2, 30-32 God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Jesus also spoke of this time when the separation of Sheol would take place. Matthew 13, 36 through 43. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. At the end of the age, Christ was going to open up Sheol, which would now be called Hades in Greek, gathering all the nations, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Matthew 25, 31-46 when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. 
Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The new heavens and the new earth, or land, had been promised. Though a distinction must be made, that the New Testament had a 400-year intertestamental period from the Old Testament. And the new earth, or land, spoken of in the New Testament begins to sound much more like the planet we live on, or at minimum, the land of Israel, versus the underworld that had been addressed in the Old Testament. 2 Peter 3, 10 through 13. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. The order of the heavens, the underworld, and the land of Israel, along with the old covenant, were coming to an end. Revelation 1, 17 through 18. Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one, I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. As we studied in Revelation, Christ returned in 70 AD, putting an end to Old Covenant Israel and created a heavens and earth in which righteousness dwells within the body of Christ, which is his church. Revelation 20, 13 through 15. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The heavens and the underworld created in Genesis was done away with and replaced with the new order of the new heavens, new earth in which righteousness dwelled, and those refusing the free gift would be sentenced to the lake of fire. Revelation 21, 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Revelation 21, 5 through 8. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now Sheol, Hades, the place of gloom and shadow, has been done away with, for Christ has cast it into the lake of fire. In the beginning, God created all the universe and through his Son redeemed those of faith, the sons of God. For those who would wash their lives in the atoning blood of the Lamb would have the right to life and would never see death, as to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But those rejecting the free gift, remaining in their sin, would never enter into life eternal. Revelation 22, 14-15 Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, and sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. King Solomon of the Old Testament lamented the great evil, that all went to the same place of Sheol, body and soul. Ecclesiastes 3, 19-21 
for what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beasts is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beasts, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and to dust all return. Who knows whether the spirit of man goes upward and the spirit of the beast goes down into the earth. Thanks be to God, all is not vanity. For this is no longer the case, as the labor and love shown to God and man will follow us into the afterlife, awarding those of faithfulness. Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. 1 Corinthians 15. 54 through 57. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.